Welcome once again to the Daily Connection. Let's ask God's blessing. Father, uh, we know that all of your word is true, and uh, it is also how we uh, are matured and are made into the image of Christ. So would you make that happen during these precious moments? We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Well, let's continue to dive into the doctrine of the second coming. And I want to pick up where we left off again, and we'll do a little bit of a review first because, as they say, uh, repetition uh, is the mother of all learning. Now, again, there are some uh, good, solid, Bible-believing believers uh, who see 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18, as describing a different event than the second coming, which is described in Revelation 19, 11 through 16. So just to review where we were last time, according to 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18, uh, we have this. Uh, First, we see Jesus will bring deceased believers' spirits with him to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord, Paul tells us. Secondly, believers on earth uh, will not precede the bodies of the deceased believers to the cr- cloud. So Christ comes to the cloud with the spirits of deceased believers. Then he catches us up. Uh, that's the idea again of the rapture. But first, the bodies of those who have died in Christ will be raised first. Then we who are alive and remain. So whatever believers are on earth during that time will then be caught up to the clouds. And then thirdly... Uh, Kind of got ahead of myself there, but believers will uh, then be caught up to the clouds to meet the Lord. So all of that we see in 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 4, uh, 13 to 18. Uh, and so people look at that and say, look, there are clear differences. On the other hand, and again, I'm trying to present this in, in a fair manner. Uh, there are some who say, look, we, we can harmonize just as we would with gospel accounts. We can, we can harmonize these and uh, we can say, look, uh, when we put... What Paul says together with what John says, they don't necessarily contradict. Uh, Paul was just focusing on some aspects of it, John on others. And I think that's possible. So if we look at Revelation 19, 11 through 16, we have this. First of all, Jesus comes to the clouds from heaven with the angels and the redeemed. They make up the armies of heaven. Uh, Secondly, Jesus would then gather the believers remaining on earth, including the soul, the, uh, uh, actually I shouldn't say the souls of those who died because he brings the souls of those who died. It's the bodies of those who died. So he would bring the bodies of those who died up. Uh, we see that in 1 Thessalonians 4. And then Jesus then descends to earth and destroys the Antichrist and his allies. We see that in Revelation 19. So we can, I think, put all of this together and harmonize this. Uh, In fact, there are some who would point out that the Roman custom of the day was that when one dignitary, uh, we'll just say king, when one king would visit the land of another king, that the host king would go out uh, to the gate of the city, and as the visiting king would draw near, the host king would walk out from the city to meet and greet him uh, and his contingency, and then walk back in with them. And some of them say this is kind of behind the idea of what Paul's doing in 1 Thessalonians, you know. Uh, we, we, Christ will come to the clouds, catch believers up, then ultimately descend to earth, as Revelation 19 says. I would suggest that's possible, uh, though there's nothing to suggest that that Roman uh, ritual uh, is in Paul's mind at all when it comes to the second coming of Christ. Uh, but it is interesting. Now, I also said that you could chart the differences between 1 Thessalonians 4 and Revelation 19. So, Uh, Let's do that once again, uh, just to keep in mind what we've been reading, right? 1 Thessalonians 4, Christ comes to the clouds, catches up believers from the earth. In Revelation 19, Christ is seen as descending from heaven with the armies of heaven. Uh, In 1 Thessalonians 4, the bodies of deceased believers are caught up. No mention of that in Revelation 19. In 1 Thessalonians 4, it does not mention Christ descending to the earth. But yet, in Revelation 19, it does say that Christ descends to the earth to destroy the Antichrist. So once again, 
uh, I believe either of these ways of taking this and these passages are possible, but there are a couple details that interest me that I just want to point out. Uh, first of all, how can Jesus be said to be coming from heaven with the armies of heaven if Paul says the bodies of deceased New Testament believers must be caught up to the clouds? Uh, to me, I, I wrestle with that and try to figure out how I could harmonize that. Uh, now, I would say it's possible that you could harmonize it by saying that, uh, that it is possible that the spirits of deceased believers uh, come with Christ, which we know is going to happen according to 1 Thessalonians 4, uh, and that then the bodies are raised, and right then and there they are given their glorified bodies. Uh, that's possible, although back up in verse 8, we already see those uh, the, the church, the bride, adored in fine linen. So it seemed to me that maybe they already had their glorified bodies. Uh, so to me, it would be a little more natural to read Revelation 19 as the redeemed already being in heaven, uh, spirit and body. A second question that comes to my mind as I think of this, and, and, and I kind of hinted at this, but in Revelation 19, verse 8, the church, the bride, remember before we got into the marriage supper of the Lamb and, uh, and the feast and so forth, the celebration, the bride is said to be adored uh, in, in fine linen. Now, uh, this, to me, uh, would make it seem then that uh, the events of 1 Thessalonians 4 took place at some earlier time. Because the bodies and, and souls, the bodies and spirits of deceased believers would have already had to be together, uh, you know, put back together uh, in some sort of glorified body. So when I look at all of this, uh, I, I look at it and I, I believe in my own interpretive opinion that First Thessalonians 4 and Revelation 19 probably make a little more sense, at least to me, if, if to say that they're describing uh, two separate events. But again, I want to be humble in my approach here. Uh, I, I want to be fair in my approach. And I don't want us to lose sight of the larger picture, which is that Jesus is coming back and it ought to affect the way in which we live. Now, what we're going to do the next time uh, is to take a close look at another passage, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. You may even want to read that to get ready which will help us answer some of these questions. We're going to really go in depth uh, in the next few lessons looking at the second coming because I want us to be fully aware of what the Bible says about the second coming.